Hey guys, Alexei from Ace5 Studios and today we're going to talk about Materials 102. This is about layers, copying materials, bumps and displacements. And we're going to start with a sphere here, which we're going to make editable because that is important. And also make sure your wireframes are on. C. To make it editable. And we're going to dive right into this. We already have a material, but we're going to make a new one. Let's apply it to the sphere. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, let's drag this guy down here because we're going to be clicking on him a lot. The first thing we want to do, by the way, this scene is from my glass render tutorial, so go check that out if you want to see that. You will also notice that I do this kind of progressive render thing going on with the standard render. Also, there's a progressive render tutorial on my website, so go check that out if you're curious how I achieved that. And let's get to this. First, let's add bump. I mean, let's add noise to our color channel so we can see what's going on. First thing you notice, if you hit render right now, your result will be different in the viewport and in the render. That's a very big problem with bump, I mean with noise. So make sure you go here and you change just the texture to UV2D. And now when you hit render, it should match up pretty much identically to what you see in the viewport. So if we change this, for example, to, let's turn this off for a second, let's give it some contrast. So it's obvious. And now we hit render, render region actually. There you go. So it matches pretty much identically to the viewport. Now what we're gonna do next is we wanna, we're gonna, in Cinema 4D and in many, in most 3D apps, uh, black and white materials, like you apply texture maps, which are black and white, to control various properties of the material. You can control your reflection, your displacement, your bump, your specular, your shininess, I don't know, whatever you want. So you can use them as masks, like you do in Photoshop or somewhere else. So we're gonna be doing basically where white is up and black is zero displacement. Uh, we just gotta find a nice noise. I'm gonna use this one called Buya. As you can see, white is gonna be up and black is gonna be down, but we're gonna make this maybe 200 scale. No, let's make it like 400, not too small. Okay. The problem is in the scale, the problem is that our contrast is too high right now, I think. Maybe it isn't. We want something, yes, like this, so that we can see the spikes coming out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this and copy it, and then go to basic and turn on displacement. And we're gonna right click and paste. And see right now you can see it says intensity centered. That means it displaces from the center. Like as in black will go down and white will go up, so it'll kind of average the distance. But we want intensity, just intensity. Because we want them to come out from the surface that exists. And as you can see now, you can't really see much because it pops up a bit, but it's not enough. So let's change this to like 50. And you see there's more displacement, but there's not enough because there's not enough polygons, so it moves like these whole points. So we want to take sub-polygon displacement. And we're already kind of getting there, so it's already progressed, but we want round geometry. There you go. And now look, we're getting somewhere pretty good. And maybe we want to increase the subdivision level one more time, just to five. And we want the height to be like 55. Okay, and now you'll see that the white, that the spikes are white and the bottom is black because we're getting this from the color here because we have the same texture. But let's say you want like in our image, we want the blend to go from like a blue to a pink to a green or something. So if you click on this, um, you can now, actually no, here you press layer and then it'll automatically make a layer channel and it'll put the noise in the layer. And now we wanna go to effect and we want colorize. First we'll go all black, so we add this little pin here and a pin here. And now we can change this one to, let's say pink. And we could just do that with the normal shader, we can change it to pink, but then we couldn't add another color here because in noise you can change this to pink if you want. But it's better to change it to the colorizer because then we can add more than one color, which is cool. So now we have the tips that are pink and we can drag this down a bit. We have more than the tips that are pink and this we can change to a blue, maybe a darker blue. And there you go. See, now we have our little colors. And let's take this a bit further. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this guy 
less contrasty. Oops, where's our noise? Let's reduce the contrast a bit. So now the green's gonna spread a bit more around the edges so it's not so sharp. And let's get our pink and let's drag our green down a bit. Get a bit more pink highlights, there you go. That's nice. And maybe change the blue to a more lighter blue. More saturated. There you go. And now I want some highlights. So let's go to luminance. Let's go, let's go to place placement first. Let's copy this guy. Let's go to luminance and paste them here now. And now you see the tops are kind of glowing, but we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a layer material here. We're going to add layer. And here we're going to go again, effects, colorize, and black and this one is going to be um, a bit off white, it's going to be a bit yellow. Actually we can add, this can be a bit yellow and this can be fully white, just the tips are going to be fully white and the yellow can be maybe a bit more intense yellow. So it kind of looks more like fire. There you go. And now we have that little glow thingy, but now you'll see our pink kind of completely disappeared. Um, we can make this I guess glow more like a pink. No, I prefer the yellow. But anyway, you get the point. You can choose whatever color you want. And this way, we've covered our layers. Also note that you can't copy, like if you go to um, your luminance, don't worry, displacement, and you copy this, you can paste it into other fields with a top level, but you can't paste it into layers, which is kind of annoying. Like if you go here, you can't, um, you can't paste, you can, you can copy the shader from inside a layer and into another layer. So basically, if you want to copy it, you should put it into a layer first, and then you can copy the noise between, like, inside. But you can't copy, unfortunately, from the shader menu to the... Yeah, but maybe you can copy it from inside here. No, it doesn't look like it. So anyway, but that's it. That's pretty much the tutorial. Just let, leave it to render and it'll clean up or change it to a different render settings to clean up. And that's pretty much it. That's the tutorial. This was Alexei from Ace5 Studios. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, join me next time for Materials 103 where I go over subsurface scattering and silk and some inverse AO and whatnot. And make sure to check out all our other tutorials at ace5studios.com and if you haven't yet, the rig models, we have the 5 Man and 5J, and we just recently made, I finally released 5J Kids, which is great. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you think and what kind of tutorials you're interested in, and have a good day.